group of people to have access to these applications. Auditing is simple. Um, it's simple to do. It's building as well, and it's useful if you, if you have a large data set and you're going through all those various <coughs> roles and six people have touched the data before it gets to you, at some time something's wrong. Now you want to know where did it go wrong. Then you can go back and you can see exactly who touched the data and what they did to it. One of the product integration is easy. Usually this is a problem. If you're working on a data science project, a bunch of people, data modelers are sitting in the room, they built a model, and then that model is handed over in some form to application developers who have to deploy it at a client. Um, with this platform, you can just wrap a, a REST API around your model and publish it on the web, just like that. And it's available for your own applications or for other applications if you want. And then the whole thing is built to scale very easily. Ecosystem, just the fact that they're partnering with open source um, projects, they're contributing enormously to Apache Spark, primarily financially. I don't know to what degree they're con contributing code, but lots of money going into that. And then the other first method, locally South Africa, especially this is significant, because we are a bit behind the curve, no, no doubt about that. And for companies to be able to use whatever IBM is providing, uh, there must be a point where it makes sense to use that technology. And IBM recognizes that, that the way to deal with that is to help companies grow, take their hand and move them along to the point uh, where they can make use of that technology. So, um, and they form formalize that process. So go to the, to the company, sit with them, do a briefing, a vision, do a discovery workshop, what do they have, where do they want to end up, do a design with them, validate it against the goals, and then implement the thing that's up to the client, of course, um, and then help them uh, maintain it if there are issues. That's what IBM said. This is what I took away from, from it. So I, I was, I was, I did about 24 sessions out of those 2,200 and uh, this is what I got. Cloud is big. I, I, this is not a surprise maybe, but I don't think we're really feeling it quite here yet. Um, but over there it's a mad rush. I don't know if it's really always, I mean there's hype, there's lots of hype, but companies are really running to get as much of their data, as much of their, of their applications on the cloud. The AI economy is big, so um, companies make available bits of functionality via the web, and you build an application that call just call this bit. You can use uh, IBM. Uh, you can you can use do speech recognition with Google. So you talk to it, get some text back, and you send the text to uh, to IBM Watson to process it further. So the user isn't aware of it, but in the background you can mix and match uh, all over the show. Deep learning is big. DevOps, you know, notice the term DevOps, are they, right. Um, and do, you, do any of you have a role description in your company, DevOps? Or is it just something that you're okay? Um, there's lots of movement there. Container technology is big. Who's uni con using containers in development? Like a Docker, Docker, two hands, okay. We lack. Um, new generation of analytics technology is, is exclusively open source. For many, many years, IBM and SAS dominated the analytics, predictive analytics world. Um, and that time is over, if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> um, open source is really working. These days, if you do machine learning, working with Spark, working with Jupyter, you're working with TensorFlow, all open source tools. IBM recognizes this, they embrace uh, open source, and they also, as I said, support so we can mix and match approach to cloud services. Uh, at the conference, there was one session, I happened to notice, where there was a Google co-presenter at IBM conference. That's something you see often. And so, so what does IBM bring to the table? They're not bringing new core technology, maybe some of it in Watson, they are bringing uh, integration and interoperability. Yeah. The aim here is to provide tools. They're not offering products, they're providing tools um, to their business partners. And the idea is that business partners build solutions, they do the marketing, and they provide support. 
cloud migration is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. For a long time, we'll be standing with feet in, in both worlds. Um, and again, I mean, recognizes this, and they advocate a hybrid approach. But this is, is not easy. If you want to move to the cloud, it takes specialized skills uh, and lots of thinking beforehand. And um, the result of this is that many businesses are confused. Um, even in the US, people that were there don't quite know. They know the cloud is there. They should do something about it, but don't quite know why. Um, and therefore, solutions have to be designed around the clients and the needs. Uh, I've seen this many times. Somebody get a bright idea, spend two years developing, and then try to sell it, and nobody's really interested. That interaction is vital, and it's becoming more and more important. What bother, so, so what's the problems if you ask people there? Security, architecture, and how to migrate. And the first one, security, is interesting because it seems to be always the first thing that comes up. And I think it's a red error. I think in many cases, the security that a cloud solution offers is significantly better than you could do yourself. For the next two or three years, if you're moving to the cloud, if you're going to implement cognitive solutions, the time frames and the cost uh, is critical. The world we write in now is different from the one that we're going to be in, in in six months. It's moving that fast. So if you're planning to release something in six months, you should design for that. Um, I'm going to skip that bit. It was an extra bit about cloud transition strategy, but not today. I'm going to go right over into something quite different. There's a company in Los, uh, Los Angeles called HI Innovations, and they've been working on, uh, on, a, on an AI system for about 15 years now. And I visited them, and I was very impressed with what they're doing. So I asked if I could show an internal demo that they made there, um, just to give you an idea. But, because what they're doing, as far as I know, there's nothing else in the world that compares with it currently. They've been at it for 15 years. About 100 person years has gone into the system. A team of 10 people. And the bulk of that development is for a natural language parser to be able to make sense of, of natural language. Uh, the company, I just want to show you what they look like. At the top left, there is Peter Foss, um, and it's his company and his architecture. And then there's nine other people that's currently working on the project. Uh, three of those people, at three at the top, are doing programming. The rest they call AI psychologists, and they're working in a, in a language they developed internally um, to build up the system. Uh, Again, yeah, just a disclaimer, I have no formal relationship with this company. I'm just bringing it here because I think it's interesting. So it can do complex text comprehension. It can really understand remarkably complex sentences. It manages a conversation if it, if it realizes that it doesn't know something or that what you're telling it is ambiguous, it asks for clarification and extra information. Got short term and long term memory. Um, it's got an internal representation of what it knows that you can access, that you can look at it and make sense. So it's not like deep learning where it's all hidden and strange. You can see exactly what's happening inside it. You can answer questions. Um, it does inference, semantic inference. It can do deductive and inductive reasoning. It learns interactively, including one-shot learning. Again, very different from deep learning. We have to have tens, hundreds, thousands of examples. Here we tell it something once and it knows it. Um, and it can, you can tell it uh, to learn stuff in natural language. So, it can, so something like, uh, if I receive email from Jacques, then read it out loud. You can also, this is experimental, but you can also 
talent about grammar rules. Well, this is not true, but you can say something like uh, a noun is always preceded by an adjective. And then it will incorporate it automatically within its parsing um, uh, structure. So I'm going to show you a demo. And the demo here, so this is a, it's a general system. For the purposes of this demo, it's been cast in the, in the form of a, of a conversational agent. And specifically, the application is a, a virtual assistant for, for somebody that's getting older, that needs somebody to help them manage their life. Hello, Bill. I am Igo, your new helper. As I get to know more about you, I'll get better at my job. Can you tell me something about yourself? Like what? Oh, like about your interests, family, profession, or where you've lived. Well, let's see. My favorite wine is Etna Rosso, and I don't like white wine. More seriously, I have three grown children. The first part of this uh, is just dumping lots of information into Igo, and then in the latter part you see as pulling that out, that information in different ways. My daughter Sarah has two boys. James, my son, has a ten-year-old girl. And my youngest daughter June is single. Where do they live? June lives in Redondo Beach, and Sarah is in Austin. James is in the Bay Area with his daughter. Where is Redondo Beach? In Los Angeles. Bill just received an email from his son James. Bill, you just got an email from your son. Would you like me to read it? Roger. I don't know what Roger means. Uh, Roger is the same as yes. Got it. Here is the email. Hi, Matt. I'm on my flight to Chicago and thought I'd shoot you a quick email. I heard that you had fun in Maui with Lily. Hey, Katie just won a reading competition at school. You should congratulate her. Did you hear that June has signed up for a Tough Mudder event? How crazy is that? I've been meaning to tell you, I just bought a 20-foot fishing boat, just like the one that you had. Its top speed is 14 knots. Katie says it's super fast. It also has the same 50 horsepower Evan Root engine. I sold my 18-foot sailboat to my neighbor because it's too slow. Oh, remember, the fishing trip I'm taking you on is in June. We should also plan for the hiking trip. It'll be in late July or early August. Sarah told me she bought you a Fitbit. The default 4,000 steps goal should be perfect to prepare for the hiking trip. Love, James. Who's Lily? Lily Lane is my girlfriend. Bill is calling his granddaughter Katie. I go is listening. Hey, Grandpa, what's up? Hi, Katie, nothing much. What have you been up to? Well, Dad told me he used to go to this teeny UC in Santa Barbara, and he took me there last week. I want to go to the same school when I grow up. Good choice, Katie. That's a great school. Hey, I heard that you won a competition. Congratulations. Thanks, Grandpa. The story I read was about some men who got rescued from a remote island. Can I read it to you? I think you'll like it. Sure, I... Notice now, we're now jumping from current context into some other context, into a story. And Igo keeps track of that. It recognizes that it's a sort of different reality. We'd love that. Okay, here it is. The men rescued in this tale of three castaways were not named Tom Hanks or Gilligan or Robinson Crusoe, though they might as well have been. In a scene straight from Hollywood, a U.S. Navy plane spotted the word help, spelled out in palm fronds on a beach. It was on a deserted island in the remote Pacific. The three men had been missing for three days. A wave had overtaken the skiff they were traveling in. The men were found waving their orange life jackets on the teeny Micronesian island of Fanadic. The island is several hundred miles north of Papua New Guinea, officials said April 9th. The men's families reported them missing April 5th after they failed to show up at the Micronesian island of Wino, where they were traveling from their home island, Pulak. 
Two cargo ships searched a combined 17 hours for the men as part of AMVER. It is a Coast Guard voluntary search and rescue program. With AMVER, rescue coordinators can identify participating ships in the area of distress and ask them to help. Katie, you're a beautiful reader. Thanks, Grandpa. That reminds me. I got a new computerized companion named Daigo. It can talk and read almost as beautifully as you. Do you want to ask it some questions to see what it learned? Okay, sure. Let me think. I go. What did a U.S. Navy plane see? The word help, spelled out in palm fronds on a beach on a deserted island in the Pacific. Whoa, you did understand the story. Where is the island of Benedict? Several hundred miles north of Papua New Guinea. What is Amber? A voluntary search and rescue Coast Guard program. What can rescue coordinators do with Amber? Identify participating ships in the area of distress and ask them to help. Pretty cool, Grandpa. I know. Hey, did you hear that your Aunt June will be participating in the Tough Mudder? Just answering this question, so one way to do it is just to go back and scan through the text and sort of make a guess. This is not what's happening. I give us really an, an internal representation. It's internalized those facts. It does inference on its internal representation and turns it back into, into natural language. No, what is that? I go, tell Katie and me about Tough Mudder. I don't know that. Let me look that up. I go is reading Wikipedia. Tough Mudder is an endurance event series that was designed and created by a British Harvard Business School postgraduate and a former corporate lawyer and tests mental and physical strength. What do participants do? Attempt the 10, 12 mile long military style obstacle courses. What do you know about the obstacles? The obstacles often play on common human fears such as fire, water, electricity, and heights. Wow. Where did you get that? Wikipedia. <laughs> Bill's business partner calls with a meeting request. Bill, let's go over your commissions this afternoon. Your total sales amount for this month is $88,520. Meet me at 3 p.m. at the club on Alameda Street, okay? I'll be there. Incoming call from Sarah. Hey, Dad. I found your lucky golf club. It was in the attic behind the Lazy Boy. I'll bring it along next time I visit. That would be nice. Gotta run. Talk to you later. There are two clubs now. There's a golf club and there's a meeting at the club. And I can go to I love the same thing. Bill talks to Igo. Igo, I'm meeting James shortly to discuss my commissions. Where is the club? On Alameda Street. How much was the sales amount? $88,520. Can you calculate my sales commission? I don't know how to calculate your sales commission. Can you teach me? Multiply the amount by 12.5%. That's it. Got it. So, calculate my sales commission. $11,065. Calculate my sales commission on $10,000. $1,250. Awesome. You are a quick learner. By the way, my daughter from California is coming to visit me. When is the visit? Next week. When is the trip? Which trip? The hiking trip. In late July or early August. Thanks. Oh, I go. Please order two bottles of my favorite red. Sure. Two bottles of Etna Rosso. Actually, make that three. Okay. I order three bottles of Etna Rosso. Later this evening, Sarah contacts Igo privately. Igo, how many steps did Bill take today? 1800. Is he already asleep? No, awake. Please ask him to call me. Okay. Igo contacts Bill. Please call Sarah, Bill. Thanks. I didn't know you took messages too. I'm impressed. Let's see how smart you are. Does my son have any children? Yes. Sarah is to Bill as Katie is to whom? James. Why did you? Analogy, crude analogy, but it's religious. In Sarah's boat. Because it is too slow. Who has it now? James's neighbor. 
Who used to own it before? James. Is it longer than the fishing boat? No, shorter. Is the 50 horsepower engine part of the fishing boat? Yes. Is the fishing boat super fast? Yes. Who told you that? Katie said that. I go, don't believe everything Katie says. Okay, I will be careful with things Katie says. What <laughs> speed are super fast? Every keeps track. Every time it learns something, it uh, it stores the source too, and it keeps track of the reliability of all sources. So if it has conflicting information, it looks it looks what information comes from the most trusted source. <laughs> fast boats. Forty-three knots. How fast is the fishing boat? Fourteen knots. What did my granddaughter win? A reading competition. Does Katie plan to go to USC? No, to this tiny UC in Santa Barbara. Where did Sarah find the club? In the attic, behind the lazy boy. Who was coming to visit me? June. Which wine don't I like? White wine. What did Sarah buy me? A Fitbit. What will Sarah buy? I don't know. Who is li- It has an idea of time, something has happened or it will happen. It's not just uh, a single fact. So, so one way to store that is um, Sarah bought him a Fitbit. So Sarah Fitbit bought Bull, so a single data structure. But it would have no idea whether this has happened or going to happen. But it keeps track of, of uh, time as well. Billy's boyfriend. You. Does Tough Mudder test spiritual strength? No, mental and physical strength. Igor can also do reminders and lists, play music, control home automation, all in natural language and integrate it with the rest of its knowledge about family and friends. There's a weight assigned to each rule by hand, um, and it's brittle. If you fiddle with that too much, then there might be something that doesn't quite work anymore. You add another rule, you have to adjust the weights by hand. So lots of effort going into that. But then as, as I go goes through a sentence, it uh, creates this parse tree. So it assigns a um, bunch of speech to all the words, noun, subject, or verb, object, um, and it, it keeps a, um, a set of hypotheses as it works through the sentence or with a, a score assigned to each. And at the end, it just chooses the one right at the top with the highest score. And it pops out a parse tree that says what all the parts of speech are, uh, parts of speech is. Um, 
but then it, it does a bit of more processing to change that into its own internal representation. It has its, its own way of, of representing um, concepts. And that's all stored in a semantic net, which is really the heart of IGO, where, where it keeps all its knowledge. And that thing is browsable. You can look what's going on inside. Um, then there's the inference engine that uh, I go use this when it answers questions. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't know something explicitly, it can go through its knowledge through that semantic net and, and make deductions. And you'll see the semantic net and the inference engine are both feeding back into the natural lang language parser, which is why it's so powerful. All that contextual information, all everything it knows, all its history uh, is used to help it to reduce ambiguity in sentences the same way that we do. If you ask it a question, it uh, infers the answer uh, within that semantic, semantic net environment. And then there's another module that translates that back into natural language and eventually it answers. And that's all I want to say there. Great, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, I think. It's uh, quarter past eight. That concludes. I'm not sure if there's still some wine and drinks and stuff, but that concludes today's session. Thank you very much for being here and being at our first meeting. And it's great that you arrived here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were here. At least. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's great. Um, so looking forward to future events and stuff like that. Um, as, as Paul has mentioned as well, if there's any um, <coughs> people interested and you want to showcase some stuff, most welcome to do so. You can just send it to info, send it to me as well, and send it to Paul, um, and uh, we will look at that. If you've got any ideas in terms of activities and stuff up here, absolutely, we are ready to do and help. Great, so thanks a lot. That completes everything. Have a good night. Thank you. So you 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 Again, understand why you're saying it's just step the bank and let us do the talk. <laughs>